What's up, everyone? I am in super chill mode today because it's been a super long week, but I got some work we got to get done on the GX. Um, I was noticing that I was getting some oil leaks kind of in the front uh, driver's side of the engine. Once you get down there, if you look and your oil filter adapter looks like this, uh, it will kind of just keep dropping oil while you're driving. Um, so it'll throw that oil throughout the whole undercarriage of the vehicle. So we're going to get in and change three of the gaskets or washer seals inside of that oil filter adapter. So we got to get down there and take it off. I'm going to do my best to clamp off the coolant line so we don't lose too much coolant. Um, if you didn't know, there are two coolant lines that go into this adapter. So we're going to get into that today. Uh, what else can I think of? I mean, I have all the parts here, all the gaskets and the seals from uh, Toyota which I will put a link to them down below. That way you guys can do it yourself. I would say this isn't like super common, um, but once you get past that like quarter million, 200,000 miles, the gaskets just go bad and it's gonna leak. Uh, for me, once I get out of the car and I'm like going where I need to go, I can just smell the oil and that's what got me kind of looking at everything else. And so you know too, this kind of goes against what I would normally tell people. Um, you always want to start at the top and kind of work your way down with leaks. This just happens to be one like, yo, I know that it's leaking from there. So we're going to knock that out today. If I have more leaks, you know, in other areas, I will stop from, I will start from the top down. Uh, what else can I think of? I mean, I got a pan. I plan to take it all off so we can clean it up here. Um, I'm going to use these guys to clamp the lines for the coolant. Hopefully the lines are good. If the lines are bad, we're, we're done. And I'm going to have to go buy some new lines. So I'm going to get you down there. We'll get into that today and I'll kind of show you it's a little tight in there. We got to remove some bolts and stuff, but we'll do, we'll, we'll do what we got to do to get it out. Um, I want to give a shout out to All Gear Solutions. It's been a long time that I've had this hat. I got some t-shirts and I'm like, yo, Joe, they're awesome. Thanks, man. So just shout out to All Gear Solutions in case you haven't checked them out. Please check them out. Great guy. He does amazing work. I love my bumper. So, all right, we're good. All right. So we, before we get down there, uh, in preparation for this, I did pressure wash the whole bottom. So it's going to be a little cleaner than what you saw in those previous photos. I took those photos a couple of days ago. Right now, it's it's much cleaner. It's still going to be gunky, uh, but it's better than the photos because I pressure washed all of it. So I recommend if you're going to do this, like make sure to clean down there before you jump down there. So like I degreased it, pressure washed it, and then like soaked everything and washed it with just water. So just do that. If not, it's going to be an enormous mess. Everything you touch is just going to be gunked with like road dirt, grime, and oil. So, all right, let me get you down there and I will show you what I'm talking about. All right, so underneath it, um, this looks way cleaner. If you peek all the way back in the back there, it's still really gunky back in there. I didn't really I'll do a better job back in there. But the majority of the leak is coming from all right here. Um, so that's what we're gonna get into. This line, we're gonna move it out of the way and right above it, there's a coolant line right there that we're gonna clamp. And then we gotta clamp this one right here. This one up here is small and it's it's tight, so it's going to be a little difficult to clamp this one. Um, if we do lose some coolant, I have extra here in case we need it. But that is what we're going to get into. We're going to separate these pieces. We're going to remove it from the block up in there. I'm going to do my best to get you as, <laughs> as many of these photos as I can because, like I said, it is really tight getting up in there. But... Uh, let me set you up in the camera. We'll start uh, clamping lines and removing stuff. Coming around this way here. See that greasy bolt right there? <laughs> that oily bolt, that one's got to come off. And those two right there, kind of in the middle of the screen, uh, those two got to come off too. So we're going to work on that right now. Like I said, it's tricky and it's tight in here, but we're going to do our best. Whatever you have to get rid of your oil filter, do it. Uh, this is an old oil filter wrench. Mine was on there too tight to do it by hand. Be prepared with some oil, because you are going to lose some oil. So if you look right in the center here, it's a 30 mil bolt. We're going to have to take that apart to get to one of the gaskets. But now you can kind of see the bolts in the back there a little bit better. And we'll be able to clamp this one down. We'll get the clamp for that one. We'll get the clamps going, and then we'll just kind of take it from there. We're going to pop off this connector uh, right here. That was pretty easy. That one's out of there. I'm going to push this one up out of the way so I don't want it to get all oily. Um, this line right here is loose on mine. It looks like there's a bracket missing the bolt already. So I'm just going to kind of try to push it this out of the way just a little bit. Um, now we can keep going. 
So right here, what I'm doing is kind of just reaching up there and uh, trying to find that really small line so I can clamp it. Uh, looking back through the video here, it might have been easier just to unbolt the sway bar and let it drop. Uh, didn't think about it while I was in there. And then here I'm trying to clamp that other one. These were not very easy to get clamped on, so just be prepared. Now, the, both those lines are clamped and that one's out. We're going to start working on the bolts. This might be a little rough because kind of got to get right where you guys are right now. So this is a mix of nuts and bolts with a stud and then also uh, 12s and 14s. I got a 12 inch extension there on a swivel head ratchet and then also if you have swivel sockets on that last 12 it's going to work amazing. Either way it's a little tight in there so just be prepared. So this right here is the 12 kind of in the back that does require a little bit more swivel than just a ratchet. So this is where the kind of swivel socket is going to come in handy on this last 12 in the back. Now, I mean, this should, there we go, uh-huh, we're off there. What I'm going to do now is release the lines. Uh, hopefully we don't lose a ton of fluid, but I got the catch can down here ready in case we do. So no way around this one, guys, you're going to see me going back and forth. This was kind of a pain to get the clips just right. Like none of my tools kind of sit it perfectly just because of how much stuff is in the way. But it can be done. Just take your time. Take it easy. Don't try to rush it. Uh, this was actually the easy one. Uh, the harder one is the small one up top. So just kind of be prepared for a bit of a struggle here. All right, all right, boys, here it is. This is what we're looking for right here. Let me go throw it on the bench real quick. We'll be right back. So right here, you can see that figure eight gasket still stuck to the mount. All right, peeps, here we are on the bench. First thing I'm gonna do is pop this sensor off. Uh, it's a 24. I already loosened it a little bit before I started filming, and then I was like, oh, get the filming up. Um, I'm really just, want to pop it off so that we can clean everything well and not damn it. I mean, even though this looks like it's been through the ringer, we're going to do our best to save that. The one thing that I did um, that might make it a little bit more difficult for me, this is the bolt right here that we're going to pop this off and then this will kind of spread open, um, which is kind of cool. They put this here so that you know how to put it exactly right back in the spot that it needs to go in. It's kind of dope. Um, this potentially could be pretty tough. So, it might be a good idea to loosen this. You don't take it all the way out, but loosen it while you're under the truck. I was just getting annoyed with everything, so I didn't do that. And this one, it might be, I think this is a 30, man. So let me see something. Yeah, it's a 30 mil. I'm just going to hit it real quick with the impact, but if you loosen it while it's still on, it's probably better for you guys, all right? Nice. And odd 30 mil. So once this guy gets popped off, this should kind of come apart and there's an interesting washer in here somewhere. Let's see if I could find it. I'm going to drop that right there. And I believe it comes apart from here. There it is. And you see, see how that O-ring is nice and flat. Ain't nothing there. There's nothing left. So we're going to clean all this up, replace all of that. First thing I'm going to do is I just want to hit this. Let me do this real quick. Yeah, this is a greasy job today, guys. It's a big mess. And the greaser. It's like, where's that O-ring that's supposed to be here? It's not here. Or it's... Yeah, you see this guy? All 
that. Let's clean. So I'm trying here to take my time with this pick. It's a pretty sharp pick, and I don't want to damage any of the metal surfaces, but that seal was like rock solid. Uh, one part didn't even come off. I had to uh, essentially torch it, so that's coming up here in a second. If you look right there, like it's flat, like it's not protruding at all. So that's what's causing all these leaks. Um, and then this is like rock hard stuck in there. All right, so as you can see, I got this one piece right here. You got that on camera. Yeah, this piece right here is just kicking my ass, so I'm gonna heat it up a little bit. Not a lot, just like that. Also, don't wanna get crazy, because it's like the thinnest part right there of the wall. But, oh, the heat, baby. Nice. Get out of here. All right. So yeah, I just wanted to stop for a second and show you guys this one. Um, this is the one that goes kind of tucked in right here. It is just absolutely flat. So it's not actually, you know, stopping anything, but then also, so you guys can see this, it's broken. So these are gonna be like some of the leading causes of the leaks coming through here. So it's just a good idea to replace them. Uh, pain in the ass, dirty job, but it needs to get done every now and then. All right, I'll be right back when all this is cleaned up. All right, we're back. So I would say it's been about a half hour of just scrubbing, cleaning, wiping down. Um, mating surfaces look good, even though it looks a little rough there. When I run my fingers over it, it's, it's fine. Um, you know, this sits on the inside, so it's not, the gasket kind of sits on the inside of here too. It's where the dirt comes into the outside because the gasket's actually sealed on the inside. So the one thing I found interesting was the way that this was set up when I took it off, I don't know if anybody's been in here before, but this was the washer that was in here, right? It was kind of real flat, super thin, almost looks like an AR shim. But this is the one that I'm finding everywhere on the parts, right? On the diagrams. And it's like a steel section with a rubber section in here, right? And if you look, it kind of fits in there nice and tight. And what that does is kind of go through here, right? Fit in there nice and tight, and then ties in to right here. So... So it has me a little like wonder why this was there but it is what it is i'm gonna go with what the parts diagrams say and that is definitely to install this one which is the steel piece with the kind of rubber seal on the inside right, but now this is all clean i'm going to kind of get you underneath because what we're going to do first is we're going to get this one in first i'm going to put our gasket in <laughs> this one it was stuck onto the vehicle so it's funny so we're going to put our gasket in put this on first and then come in through here, get our lines hooked up while it's kind of loose and then fit this in here. I think it'll be a little bit easier. So let me get you under the truck. I'll be right back. So I wanted to give you guys, let me stop moving for a second, give you guys a nice idea of what it looks like in there. Um, that surface looks pretty nice and clean. I'm just gonna wipe it down, um, put a tiny, tiny little bit of grease on there just because I want it to uh, you know, seal in there pretty good, but just be careful when you're sliding back up, make sure that O-ring you don't pinch it anywhere. So what I'm going to end up doing, let me switch the light here. So I got, so you see, I got my O-rings, new ones installed. A little tiny bit of grease, a little bit of grease here. I went ahead and checked on this again. This definitely is um, for this bolt. I'm not sure where this came from. Somebody might have been in here before and just decided to use this instead of this. I'm going to use what Toyota says to use. So I'm going to put this one in. Um, Put the little sensor back in here so we're going to install this one in first um bolt it all down then get our hoses hooked up then get this with this guy in um hopefully make things a little bit easier it's tight in there getting these hoses back in so i just want to make sure we get those in good and the hoses still look good so i'm going to set you up with the camera and get that going 
Surprisingly here guys, everything went in a little easier than coming out, which normally doesn't work that way, but kind of went really smooth. Uh, getting the lines back on, you know, was the only pain in the ass, so just be prepared for that. Just like that, we're done. Hoses went back in a lot easier than they came off, which was nice. Everything is back in and torqued. I still need to plug this guy in and do some more cleaning here. But now the bolts up there are nice and clean. And that way I can tell if it's going to leak again. I got it. And usually, um, let me get you over here. Be prepared because if it leaks, that means you pinched a new gasket. So just be prepared for that. Redo all the shit again. Don't forget to put in an oil filter. Don't forget to put in your oil. And don't forget to put the engine coolant back in that you lost. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll drop it down below. I'll put all the links to everything. Um, one oddball tool that you might not have is a 30 millimeter socket, which is what you need to get that adapter, that big bolt off. So 30 millimeter socket. Um, anything else, let me know down below. Thanks, guys. You guys be safe out there.